watch as I dissolve racism and human segregation in one video. So, during episode 3, I was making references to the Earth family tree. This concept applies to the many species of organisms that exist throughout the Earth. There exists within each branch of the family tree, another family tree exclusive to the specific species. In humanity's case, all of the different family bloodlines are branches of the human family tree. If we trace our homo sapien DNA to the source, the common ancestral heritage, we are led to Africa. This is the tree of humanity. Geneticist Raj Ramasar has used these differences to help build a global family tree by tracing genes down the female line. Our modern genes are the branches of the tree, and geneticists have followed them back in time to find our ancient roots. Because each person's mitochondrial genome is inherited from his or her mother, all mitochondrial lineages are maternal which means that the females carry down this genetic makeup while the males inherit it but are unable to pass it down. But follow the branches back to the beginning and the tree reveals that ultimately we all have our roots in the same place. There's no question from the genetic data that is generated on the people here as well as other studies that have been done that humanity arose in Africa and that's where the depth of this, this thick trunk illustrates where the majority of humanity can look for its roots. There was a single branching out of Africa. It amounts to historically a single band of individuals leaving the African continent. So that was the original migration out of Africa that we can track with DNA. All differences in our physical appearance are all explained by adaptations to the surrounding environment. People who have lived closer to the equator for generations upon generations for thousands of years have naturally adapted a darker skin complexion. This is because the sunlight and the UV rays are most intense along the equator because that is where the sun is directly shining on the fucking earth consistently day by day, year by year. Different human beings developed in different zones of altitude which in turn have differences in air pressure, which mold and shape the bone structure and bone density, giving us differences in appearances. The rest of the world connects back to Africa through one thin branch. Uh, from there, there were branchings out in many different directions, into Europe, into the rest of Asia, Eurasia to the north, and then down to Australia and Japan, and ultimately to the Americas on the other side. If you follow the projected path that humanity took in this alleged theory, you can see how it would make sense in the context of the surrounding area. First of all, the Nile River runs northwards. One of the largest rivers on Earth happens to be a perfect channel, a highway for our ancestors to use to quickly gain access to the Isthmus of Suez, the 75 mile wide strip of land that lies between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea and thus into the rest of the world. You can directly trace the genesis of all civilization just by looking what's alongside the ancient bed of the Nile River. The Olmecs are another anomaly that ties into this theory. Back when the Inquisitors were discovering central Mexico, several megaliths depicting what appears to be African people were discovered throughout the jungle in random locations. This is strange because Africans weren't have supposed to reach North America until the slave trade. And yet, here we have sophisticated depictions of them on the other side of the planet, weighing several tons in a place where pyramids litter the jungle. The original Egyptians were black, and that they were later conquered and ransacked by other civilizations who claimed Egypt as their own. And judging by the age of the Sphinx, the original Egyptians, the founders, must have existed before the end of the last ice age with their own hieroglyphs even depicting their lineages stretching back in time far beyond the dynasties into what they call the first time, or Zeptepi. Please watch John Anthony West's Magical Egypt series. John Anthony West is a man who has extensively studied ancient Egypt for his entire life. Also check out Graham Hancock and Robert Bouval. These people are shedding light upon our past, and they are uncovering secrets of the ancient worldwide civilization that used to exist around the world. A civilization that we descend from, that we have forgotten.